Hi, I'm Brent Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College, and today we're going to be talking about a specific database, the Science Reference Database. In order to get to the databases from the college homepage, you need first to get to the library. Mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or click on Student Support and scroll all the way down to More Helpful Services and Resources, and we are listed in the middle alphabetically. Once at the library, there's a variety of places you could start your research. For example, OneSearch has a little bit of everything. Um, but say, for example, you know what your topic is and you know where you want to go. Before we get into the databases, I'm going to show you a couple of quick things that will help, hopefully, help you. One, Ask a Librarian is available to you 24-7. It's a chat service. When the SMC library is open, you will chat with an SMC librarian. When we are closed or the campus is closed, you will chat with a librarian from a college or university in the consortium to which we belong. So you will always speak with a librarian when you go here. And if they can't answer your question, they will give us what's called a ticket. And as soon as we are open again, we will email back with you and make sure that you got the answer you needed. Workshops and videos are linked here. We have workshops live in fall and spring, and we have them archived on our YouTube channel at all times. And you can book a study room, as well as finding research guides to help you with specific topics. Upcoming events are listed here. Some resources, including how to link to our YouTube channel, are here. Contact information and the hours that were open are listed here. And our social media links are at the bottom. So I know today I'm going to be looking for a science topic. So I can head directly into databases and I can say I want the subject, general subject, of science. I can't search here for my specific topic because search for databases searches only the description of the database. It doesn't search within the database. So for example, if I were looking for air pollution, if I typed it here, I wouldn't get anything because it falls under environmental science. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to take a look. The best bets are those databases that are used most often by students in the science searching. That doesn't necessarily mean they're the best bet for your topic. So take a look through them and see if you can find something that looks interesting to you. In this case, we're going to head into the Science Reference Center. It is a comprehensive research database with multiple full-text science-oriented content pieces, including encyclopedias, reference books, etc. And here are the various topics that it covers. So I'm going to start there. And when I head into this database, this may look very familiar to you if you've used, for example, academic search. It's the same interface, but it covers different topics. So once I'm in here, I'm going to say I want to look for air pollution. And I'm particularly interested in toxic air pollution, so that that has immediate health effects. So down here, I want to make sure when I limit my search, I'm going to do a little bit of limiting. I want to limit it to full text so that I actually get articles, not just information about the articles. And then I search it to see what I get. And I find 115 articles. Now within these articles and other resources, I have something called periodical. And this database uses periodical to describe things that are not scholarly. So a magazine, um, a trade journal, which is something that is used within a particular um, industry. It's not an academic journal. A newsletter, something like that. Okay. So um, it also gives me videos that I can watch. So if my teacher has told me you have to use scholarly journals for this, I would have to go through until I can find one that says academic journal on it. Or I could save myself some time. And up here, I could limit my search. I could refine my search to say, give me only peer-reviewed articles. Okay, And that takes it down to 23. So. I can look through here, and if I see something that looks interesting, I can find it. Now, notice some of these are very old, so I may be looking um, a little too broadly. So I have a problem with my search, and my search is the word toxic. If I take that word out and I keep everything else the same, I'm saying give me full text, give me peer-reviewed journals, suddenly instead of 23, I have 725. So 
One of the things to be aware of when you're searching databases is that sometimes the words you use are not the same words the database uses. So play around with it a little bit. If you get very few results, take a look at your search. Maybe something that you're using is something that the database is not connecting to your topic and you're missing good articles. So I'm going to go through here. These are full text, peer reviewed, but they're old. So I'm going to say instead of 1975, give me 2018. And then I apply that. And suddenly it cakes out like seven eighths of the articles, but everything that is left is now relatively current. Okay. I can also do a little bit more limiting because 94 is still quite a lot. And I can click on subject and of these, You'll see when I click show more, the topics assigned to these various articles and how many are on that topic. So if I'm really interested in air quality, I can click on just those articles that are about air quality specifically. And in two steps, changing the date and going to a specific topic, I've gone from over 700 to 14. So this is a very powerful way to limit a search down, but you can you should be careful using it because you can limit yourself down too much and miss good stuff. So once I find something that I like, let's do this one. When I click on the title, it gives me the article. And from there, I can do a number of things. I can search on related subject terms. Now keep in mind, if you search on one of these subject terms, they're going to search the entire database. So you're going to broaden your search out quite a bit. I can um, read the article by heading over into the PDF full text and read it online. I can also save it to my Google or OneDrive. I can print it, email it, I can cite it. When I cite it, say for example, I'm using APA. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can copy and paste this into my paper, but then I want to double check and make sure that I'm using the same template that my instructor requires. So I want to make sure that I'm using the correct edition, that I haven't left anything out, that if there are any spaces missing, I can put those back in, periods at the end, etc. Okay. And then if I want to email it to myself, I can do that as well. I can email it to my um, home or school address, it doesn't matter. I keep the PDF as a separate attachment. I ask it to give me a citation format that is specific to whatever my class is using. And never send it in plain text because that will strip things out. And then I send it and eventually the server from SMC will deliver it to your email box. So this is one database that can be very useful specifically for um, subject um, subjects that fall under science. Good luck with your research and contact us if you have any questions.